Hello everybody, this is Craig. A couple of you have asked about some of these standard normal variable problems from your ME work out of uh, chapter 6 in our text. I thought I'd go over one and post it so you guys can see, get an idea how some of these are done. This is one of the more difficult ones. Hopefully you're getting a handle on the easier ones. If not, give a holler. I'm happy to make videos like this. Or we can gather them up and we can have a whiteboard session. It's probably time we do that towards the end of this week. What do we know about the standard normal variable? Well, it fits the normal curve. Uh, it has a population mean of 0. And it has a population standard deviation of 1. Well, that's all well and good, but the problems we're given are not standard normal variables. They're normal variables. They have, uh, oh, populations of 100 or standard deviations of 13 or something. So they're a little bit different. We can transform, though, our problems with our normal variables into standard norm normal variable problems. And we do that by using our equation for z. Z says if we take the value of x, subtract the mean, and divide by the standard deviation, we create the standard normal variable z. And that's what we want to do. In the problem that we were given, or a problem that I found, we have the probability of x is greater than 148. And we know that that probability is equal to 0 0.04. Well, let's see how this looks on our standard normal curve. Hey, that wasn't so bad. We know we've got a population mean here. And let's see, this is a the the variable 148 must be somewhere over here. And how do I know that? Well, it says the probability of a value being greater than that is quite small, 0 0.04, which means this area here is 0 0.04, which means this big area is 0 0.96. And we know that because the total area under the standard normal curve is equal to 1.0s. So let's see. Well, we are going to, um, we have a transformation we can make. And if I just rearrange the values here, if I multiply both sides by standard deviation, I can have z. Oh, we need more room. Let's move that guy. We'll take this guy and we'll say z times the standard deviation is equal to x minus the population mean. And then we can solve for x. And we say x is the population mean plus, get this right, Craig, z times the standard population standard deviation. And we can use this guy to help us solve this problem. OK, when we do the transformation, we can say we are transforming x to z, but we still need a value of z. And we're going to get that from the standard normal table using the information we have here. Let's see, do I have the standard normal table? Oh, gee, I don't think I do here. Let's see, if we look up in the back of our textbook, we have the standard normal table. And I'm going to use the right half of it because it looks more like the picture I've drawn, where we have this little area. And although what it gives in that right-hand side of the standard normal table are values of z that are less than are equal to z. So it's giving the values that correspond with the big part of the area under this curve. Well, that's OK. We can just simply take 
1 minus that value that we're given. So what I'm going to do is go into my table, and I'm going to find the value, the probability of 0.96. And that's what this table gives us, probabilities. And I'm going to find the z value. So let's see, if I look for 0.96. Uh, do, 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 do. I got 0.9599 at the intersection of 1.7 and 0.05, which means our z value corresponding to that 0 0.96 is 1.75. Let me double check that 0.96. Yep, I have uh, 0.9599, which is real close to 0.96. There's my z value. Now I can take this z value and plug it in here along with the rest of the values to find x. Is that what we were asked for? Hmm, let's see. Where's the rest of my problem? I think we were told, I didn't finish the problem, sorry, that our standard deviation is equal to 13. And we were given an x value. We want to find, let's see, x. We want to find what the population mean is. That's what we're looking for. So I am going to solve this equation for the population mean. Boy, I hope I'm doing that problem right. I'm going by memory now. OK, what do we know? Well, we know x is 148. We know. We're looking for the population mean. We know a z value, 1.75. And we know the standard deviation is 13. So we can solve this for the population mean. And let me grab my calculator. I'll pause the video. I'll be right back. All right, I calculated this value. And what I found is that the population mean is 1. 125.3. There's our answer. So the mean is really 125.3. Now, in other problems, they turn this around. And let me find one of those. OK. In another question, they say, where'd my pen go? Come back, Auntie M. There it is. They say, well, we know what the population mean is. In this case, we'll call this problem B. This was problem A. And problem B, we know that the population mean is a hundred. Oh, boy. We know that the population mean is 133. And in this case, we want to know a standard deviation. Given the same probability, we know that x greater than 148 is equal to 0 0.04. So the z value remains the same. It's 1.75. Again, we can use this equation, which we've really just rearranged our equation of the z statistic. And so we can say, let's see, I'll write it down. x equals population mean plus z times population standard deviation. And let's plug things in. Again, we have 148 is equal to our mean, 133, plus z, 1.75, times our unknown standard deviation. And this time, let's see. I may do the calculation. Be right back. This time, when we do the math, we find that the population standard deviation is equal to 8.57. So what did we do? We took our a normal random variable, x. And we converted it into a, a standard normal variable, because then we can use our standard normal table and rely on the normal curve. 
and use our equation for the standard normal variable to solve for what we need. We knew that the probability of our variable being greater than 148 was 0 0.04. So we drew a little picture, and I suggest you do that. Recall in the standard normal table, there they always give the values to the left of some value. So when we looked up values, we found what this area was. Actually, we, we knew what it was. If this was 0.04, we knew this area was 0.96. And we could calculate what the z value is equating to this 148. And we did that by looking up 0.96 in the back of our book. And we found that the z value is 1.75. Once we realized that our z-value was 175, 1.75, we had enough information to go in and solve for what we needed to solve for. We used our rearranged version of our standard normal variable e definition equation. And we found, let's see, if we had sigma population standard deviation equals 13, we could plug the values into our equation and solve for the population mean, or vice versa, we could solve for the population standard deviation. OK, folks, that was kind of rough. I uh, did that without practice. I hope it helps. Let me know if you have other problems. We can go over them.